And our next guest is arguing for a pause and another pause in July. Joining us is Wharton School Professor of Finance, Jeremy Siegel. You have been so vocal on this fact that you think the Fed has done enough and to do yeah. no more. It looks like you're going to get your wish in June. That's the expectation of the markets, at least, ahead of the CPI report. But they're priced for, for a hike in July, and they might sound hawkish. Yeah, and Sarah, you're completely right. I mean, July is still pricing in 25 basis points. I think that, that that's going to be too high. Interestingly enough, you know what the most important data next week might be? It might be Thursday's initial claims report, of course, yes. which comes after uh, the, the, the Fed meeting. Um, uh, that was quite a jump last week, and I don't want to make too much because that's a volatile data point. But I always have taught and, uh, uh, you know, uh, stated that the initial claims is a very sensitive early indicator. Um, we had kind of a false move a, a month ago when we found out there were fraud, fraudulent claims from Massachusetts. It went up uh, and then it went back down. Uh, they, they claimed there was no fraudulent claims in, in that last report. But we'll see if it's repeated as far as that's concerned. I believe... You know, going in, we're going into political season. Um, they've got to be sensitive to what's going on in employment. If we begin to see any faltering on that labor market, uh, they are going to give up uh, their, uh, their, their rate hikes. I don't know. They've made it pretty clear that inflation is the number one target, and they want to see it come down more convincingly to target. And, and it still is double where it needs to be and is moving down slower than a lot of people expected. And, and it feels like they're willing to tolerate some pain in jobs and the market and the economy to get there. And we haven't gotten there. Yeah, th that's true. But they do still do have a dual mandate. Um, and, uh, you know, let's wait, you know, uh, you know, the Fed was created by Congress. It's 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 not guaranteed by the Constitution. It's got to be subject to some political pressures, even though it is supposed Agreed, to be. Agreed, but Jeremy, we have a, under 4% unemployment rate, 10 million job openings, That's and right. jobless claims are still historically pretty low. Yeah, oh, they are. I, I'm talking about trend here. No, at, that's why they could be, uh, uh, you know, as aggressive as and hawkish as they are, because really we haven't seen, you know, very much unemployment. People feel very confident about their job. Let me say one thing. If we get a negative job report in the next, maybe not next month, the next two months, it's going to hit headlines. First time since COVID. And then people are going to say, ooh, can I be as assured that I'm going to get another job? Um, and that's going to play into politics and I think is going to pressure the, the Fed on the other side. And then they're going to begin to say, OK, you know, you know, maybe inflation can get better. We do know, by the way, as I've reported, that there's a lag and uh, it's a backwards looking indicator uh, that the Fed is using on inflation, particularly with respect to housing. It, it puts in far more inflation than we're going to get. The Fed has admitted that the, the second half of the year is going to look much better on that housing data. So I think, you know, it, the, the bulk of that inflation is is behind us, that residual part. It would be foolish for the Fed to, to squeeze an extra point or two at the cost of millions of, of workers out of jobs, particularly in a political year.